a hurry person because he got to get to the altar and God's about to do something. He said, Ronnie, the most difficult people to receive from me are those who have had an experience with me. He said, it's much easier for those who have never had to jump in and receive than those who have had to jump in and receive and have. Because there's a difference between I had than I have. Because God's not so much interested in what you used to have, had. What he's more concerned about is what you have right now. And we've been talking about this word immersed. And the word immersed means to plunge in. The word immersed means to have committed the act of plunging in. See, there's a lot of acts that I've committed in my life and some I'm not proud of, but that one is an act that God wants us to commit. Amen. Because here's where we stand as the church. In this moment of history, we stand at the bank of God's river. And He's calling everyone, those who had a year ago, five years, ten years, let me cover it all, a hundred years ago, you had something with God. God says, that's great that you had something. You can build on that. It can be a memorial. You remind yourself of what I have done, but it's not enough. What I want you to do is say, I have something from God fresh and new. We stand at the brink of the river, and God says, the most difficult people that I have to, to convince and to show that it's time to immerse themselves, to dive into what I'm doing in this hour, are those who have had something from me. But God says today that it's time for all of us to dive in, to plunge in, and say I'm not satisfied with what I had. I want what He has for me today. I want to be proud of what I have today. I want what He has what He has. Peter and John in Acts chapter 3 when they walk and see the man who's lame at the gate called Beautiful. Peter didn't say, look at me. And they looked at him intently. The Bible says with intensity they looked at him. And they didn't say, we don't have any silver or gold, but what we had, we give to you. Yeah. Is that what they said? No. Look at us. And with intensity, Peter and John knew who they were. When they looked in the mirror, watch this, they didn't just see fishermen. See, that's all some of you see. What you do for a living, how much money you make, your last name, your pedigree. That's all you see when you look in the mirror. All you see is what has gone on in your life, your past experiences. Some of you, all you see is traumatic events that have happened in your life. You see your failures. You see your mistakes. You see the way other people failed you. You see the abandonment that has gone on in your life where person after person that you loved and cared for walked out on you. And you, uh, when you see yourself, all you see is that stuff that hangs on to you from other people and from your own failures. And Gideon said, who me? And the angel said, yes, I'm talking to you, Gideon. You are a mighty man of power. You are a mighty warrior. And today when God looks at Across this crowd, he sees mighty men and women of God who he's called to be warriors like Peter and John. Listen, it's not about fighting an actual battle, but it's a spiritual battle. The mighty and submitted women refuse to fight with flesh and blood. They say we will not find ourselves in little bitty squabbles and little bitty skirmishes and division. Churches that are mighty refuse to divide themselves on the brink of revival over petty issues. But they say we are mighty warriors of God. And they look at the lame and the broken. And they say not what we had. But look at what we have. Such as we have. We get to you rise up in all power. It's not what I have. It's what I have. Because you know I'm just like you. What I had I leak. You leak. Did you know that? that mean? That means when you go out there, you're in your home. I mean, I know all y'all, your homes are perfect, but I have three boys. <laughs> 14, 12, and 4. I'm talking about dynamite. <laughs> That's interesting days waiting to happen. Go home, you leave. Why? Because everything's not working. Oh, 
always agree. We don't always get along. We don't know how to handle stuff. Things go wrong. We get sick. Family members get sick. Things happen. And then, not to mention going out into the world, we leave. There are struggles. There are difficulties. And so you know what i got to do every day? I've got to plunge in. I've got to take a dive. I've got to jump in again. Because God has more for me. And what we heard this morning is so true. God is riding on the wind of his presence into your circumstances and situations. And he wants you to realize who he is so you can then realize who you are. What Gideon did not get at first is that the reason the angel could say, you mighty man of valor. Actually, Gideon at that moment was a scaredy cat. He was. I mean, he was high down. High, everything he tried to do was high. He was a scaredy cat. But the angel of the Lord, or the Lord, called him for who he saw he could become. <laughs> Not in himself, but you know why he could say it with confidence? Because he knew who Gideon could be in the Lord God. <laughs> so, and when I dive in, this is what happens. The first thing that happens is God begins to show me who he really is. His holiness, his power. You know what happens? All the devil's lies that tell me I could never change never quit being an addict, a drunk. I could never quit being a meth addict. I could never quit being bound to drugs. I could never quit being free from pornography. I could never quit being free from adultery, fornication, which is sexual activity outside of marriage. I could never get free from that thing that's caused me to walk in the same circle, the same bondage. The enemy that tells me that I'll always be bound in that abuse that happened to me and hang my head in shame and guilt and torment. The enemy that tells me I'll always be tormented with night terrors and nightmares as a liar because when my God looks at me he says I'm riding on the wind of my presence and I am the Lord who reigns over all. I will ride into the, into your circumstances in the middle of your storm. I will deliver you. I will set you free. I will cause you to walk a new way. A new step. You can Some of you go home mad if I don't actually read a verse off the 
2 Kings 5, verse 1, the last part, it says, But though Naaman was a mighty warrior, everybody say mighty warrior. Mighty warrior. He suffered from leprosy. The story goes on to say that the king of Syria admired Naaman because the Lord had used Naaman to bring about many victories for the kingdom of Syria. He had great admired. He admired him greatly because of the way he performed and the way the Lord had used him as a mighty boy. That's all God is looking for, is those who will plunge in and surrender themselves to him so he can make them mighty warriors. But notice what happened to Naaman. Even though he was a mighty warrior, what did he do? He suffered. Sometimes mighty warriors suffer. And the goal of the enemy is he brings suffering to your life is to take the warrior part out of you. To take the have out of you and make it had. Has been. Naaman had been a mighty warrior. That's what you follow. He wants to take the mighty warrior part out of you and leave the suffer and the leprosy right there. And there's some mighty warriors in this room who used to war mightily for God. You're suffering today. I want to tell you, you're not suffering alone. The Lord is right there with you. Yeah. And He'll take what is meant for bad and turn it to your good. All things work together for good to those who are called according to God's purpose. He will never leave you or forsake you. See, it's great to receive God's acts, and that's what we're doing. And some of you are going to run to Him, and He's going to ride on the wind of His Spirit into your circumstance and act on your behalf. And He's going to strengthen you and touch you and deliver you and heal you and set you free. But between the acts of God, we must know the ways of God. And how do I find out the ways of God? When I dive in, I listen for His still, small voice. I'm thankful for His touch. It's His acts. I'm thankful for His healing. It's His acts. I'm thankful for His peace and joy that comes over me. Like a river, it's his acts. I'm thankful for his spirit empowering me. It's his acts. But I'm also thankful for his word that whispers into my ear. And he says, Ronnie, today I want you to know that though you may be suffering, I stand right beside you. And when this is over, I'm going to turn the sword of your enemy against him. And I'm going to work all things together for your good. And his word carries me. I'm not the slave. He carries me for glory. Thank you. 